So today, we're going to look at the mystery of deconvolution in Pixinsight. Yes, deconvolution. It's an evil word. Uh, a lot of people don't understand deconvolution, how to do it, uh, even what it is. Uh, however, we're going to take a stab at it and we're going to try and make this work and make it understandable. And we're going to try to make it so that you can use it. Okay, so let's have a look at PixInsight deconvolution. Um, I want you guys to weigh in. Uh, let me know in the comments. If uh, you use it, if you've tried to use it, has it worked, does it work uh, for you? Is it is it easy to do, is it not easy to do? Um, if anyone has any tips that they wanna share with the other viewers of the channel, by all means, comment away. That's the best way that we're all gonna learn. Me, you, everyone else. So let's get started. Let's get looking at this evil deconvolution in PixInsight. Okay, so we have our PixInsight open and I've called up my luminance image. You want to apply deconvolution to your luminance images. And uh, there's certain steps that are required in order to utilize the deconvolution tool in PixInsight. And we want to look at that, um, and I'm not. I don't want to drag this video out uh, and make it complicated. So I'm going to um, try and simplify things as as much as I can, and I won't get into too many technical details that will just uh, sidetrack everyone's thinking. Um, let's just see how deconvolution can be worked and, and what settings um, we can use to get it to work. So there's three things that you need in order to apply deconvolution to an image. And the first one is a decon mask, which you can create uh, very simply, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, you need a local deringing support image, which uh, helps protect the brighter stars. And of course, you need your point spread function, your PSF image, which gives you an average of what your stars look like. Now, how do we create these? Uh, okay, simply the decon mask, um, which I've, I've named it decon mask, um, you create by simply clicking on the tab, holding it, dragging it off, and you create a, a clone of your luminance image. And then you're going to use your histogram transformation tool to create a mask uh, by adjusting the value. So we want to turn off the screen transfer function and we'll reset the histogram transformation tool, call up the preview, real-time preview window so we can see what it looks like as we're doing it. And you simply stretch the image and create your mask. And what you're going to want to do is you're, you'll want to um, actually clip it a bit. So you're gonna move that black point over because this is a mask that we're making. So we wanna make sure that we're protecting the background, which is the black area, and uh, while still allowing some of the nebulosity to be revealed um, so that we can uh, not only in the deconvolution process uh, uh, tighten our stars and, and make them a little smaller, but also uh, bring back some of the resolution in the uh, in the um, the nebula regions um, as well. And uh, that's because um, you have atmospheric distortions. Your seeing isn't that great, um, or your optics uh, can cause distortions and, and can make the uh, can make the image blurred, right? So deconvolution is going to try and restore the uh, the resolution of the image that was lost due to um, atmospheric conditions or optics. So in making this mask here, real quick, uh, we just want to we just want to do a quick mask. So something like that. Um, you can see where it is on the histogram, how I've adjusted it. Okay, so we're just going to apply that. And we can close off the histogram tool now, and we can also close off the real-time preview because we have our, our mask generated. And then you would simply uh, rename it, go to right-click on the right-click on this tab here, and go to identifier, and you can call it uh, 
decon underscore mask. I'll call it two because I have one created already. And that's uh, how we create the, the decon mask. The local deconvolution support image, um, the LDSI for short, um, this is uh, created by um, simply creating a uh, star mask. Um, and the star mask can be created under process and you go to mask generation and star mask and you're creating that that star mask off of the um, unstretched uh, luminance image that you have up and this uh, basically the default settings work um, the one thing that you might have to play with a bit is the uh, scale uh, it defaults at five when you open the star mask tool. Um, if I want to protect these brighter stars that we see, these larger stars in the image, um, the default scale won't work for that. Um, you'll need to increase it. So increasing the scale um, can help capture some of the larger uh, stars that appear in your image if if your image has that. Um, in my case, it did, and I needed to up the scale to 10, actually. The only other um, adjustment that you may have to make is the truncation, and I can typically drop that down to about 25,000, 0.25, let's say. And once you've done that, you can click apply and it'll generate a star mask which will look something similar to this not exactly of course it'll be for your your particular your image and your stars but this is how it'll look where the black conceals and the white reveals so the the mask is protecting the background and it's leaving the stars um, open so that we can actually um, uh, deconvolute them, uh, apply the deconvolution to them. And lastly, you want to create a PSF image, point spread function. And this is a, an average of what your star looks like, what your stars look like. Um, and in this case here, you can see this is what, for my image, this is what the average star looks like. Now there's different ways of doing this and I've been taught um, different ways. Some of these techniques that I'm referring to um, were taught to me by Ron Breacher. And Ron, Ron is a professional astrophotographer and he also does one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, pics and site training too. Um, you can actually check out his website if you're curious uh, at astrodoc.ca. And um, he's uh, a very knowledgeable guy, and uh, he's been very helpful uh, over the years, uh, a, a very good friend. So uh, I appreciate his uh, input on uh, uh, different uh, um, aspects of Pix and Sight. So the different ways of creating a PSF uh, image, um, the, the one way is a little more tedious than the other. Um, but you would want to go to Process and we go to all processes and we go to dynamic PSF and we open this up and we have this uh, window here I'm just gonna minimize that one down and what we need to do at this point here is we need to click on some stars um, to select at least 20 stars and we want to look at the A column and we want to make sure that the value is between 0.2 and 0.8. So this will be a star that isn't saturated. One would be saturated. A, a, a value of one would be saturated. And we don't want it too faint. So anything below 0.2, um, that, would, that would be too faint. And we don't want to use that. So we want to keep this value in the A column between 0.2 and 0.8. And what this requires is that you go through 
your image and you click on stars and you check to see that it's falling within those um, parameters. So this one here is 0.34, which is great. 0.3, this one's 0.4, that's great. So now we've got to find 20 stars that match up in that um, in that criteria. This one is 0.6, so that's great. And you simply keep going until you get your 20 stars. Now this one here we see is 0.1, that's no good. So we're going to delete that one and we'll pick a different star. We'll try this one here and see what this one is. This one's 0.5, so that's perfect. So we're gonna continue to pick stars in our image until we have 20 of them. We wanna make sure that they're all Moffat or Gaussian. Now, if you have a mixture where you see some are Moffat and some are Gaussian, decide which ones are which you have more of. Do you have more Moffat or do you have more Gaussian and delete whichever you have less of. So so if you don't have as many Gaussian as you do Moffat, then delete the Gaussian um, sample, star samples, and find new ones that uh, are Moffat. And we want to keep that, we want to keep it uh, consistent like that. You don't want to mix the Moffat and the, the Gaussian um, that uh, you don't want to mix those together. So that's something to, to be aware of when you're doing this. Now, once you have your 20 stars um, selected and they meet the criteria for the A column of 0.2 to 0.8 and they're, they're all Moffat, let's uh, say, um, we simply click once on one of them and then Control A will select all of the, all of the stars that we've highlighted. And once we've got them all selected by using Control A, we go we go to the export a synthetic PSF function button, and that looks like a little camera, and we click that, and it generates our PSF image for us, and this would represent an average of what our stars look like. So deconvolution can use that when it's uh, doing its job. Now, that's one way of creating a PSF image using PixInsight's dynamic PSF. We'll just close that off. Another tool that is available to you, and I find it extremely useful and it makes the process very easy, is a script by Hartman Borneman. And that script is available. I've uh, put information where you can download it. Um, and the installation instructions, uh, I've put that uh, link in the uh, description for you. And you can visit that page and uh, uh, check out um, the, uh, the script, uh, download the script, and you can uh, view the installation instructions. This script can be found under uh, script. Once installed, you can be found under script, render, and PSF image. And what it's going to do, this script, is you can leave it at the defaults that it comes, uh, that it calls up and is uh, preset with. Um, and you want to click evaluate. And what it'll do is the script will analyze your image. It'll analyze your stars. And it will create a PSF image automatically so it'll take a it'll take a minute or two it depends on your computer um, it's very uh, CPU uh, intensive uh, so it'll, it'll take a minute or two to uh, scan through the image scan through the stars and determine a PSF image uh, for you and this shows you what uh, the PSF uh, image looks like that uh, the script determined and uh, it's got a number of details here for you that uh, you can look at if uh, that interests you and and uh, like I said that's uh, I'm not going to get into the technical side of it just to keep this somewhat uh, simple uh, because I know there's a lot of people out there that uh, have difficulty with deconvolution, including myself. Uh, it doesn't always work as uh, you want it to. So let's just keep it simple and uh, we'll show you how to use it and uh, some of the settings that do work, like I said. So this shows you um, 
the PSF image, and this shows you the X and Y projection of that uh, uh, PSF. Now what we can do is tell uh, the script to create that PSF for us, which it did here, and we can now close that off, and we have our PSF image that was automatically created for us by the script, which is fantastic. Uh, certainly something to consider adding to your workflow. It might be uh, considered fast food uh, by some, but uh, I say that, you know, sometimes you got to keep this, uh, this hobby and the work involved with it um, uh, somewhat... Uh, uh, easy. Um, you've got to keep it lighthearted and and still make it uh, have it have it be some fun. So um, if you can do things that uh, will help um, speed the processes along and make life a little easier for you while you're processing, that you can enjoy it a little more. I say by all means. And and Hartman uh, Borneman there, he's created this script which uh, does exactly that for us, and it works great. And I highly recommend it uh, for creating your uh, PSF uh, images. Um, okay, so I already have the PSF image generated here as well, so I don't need two of them. But I just wanted to show you how the how those three files, those support files, are created uh, for the deconvolution process. Now we want to go and, and open our deconvolution uh, tool. So we're going to go to process and deconvolution and deconvolution and that'll open it up and um, what we're going to do here is we're going to use external PSF because we've created our own PSF image. Um, these other, the, the parametric PSF and the motion blur, they're built in uh, pre-built uh, PSF uh, for deconvolution and uh, the parametric PSF you can actually um, adjust it uh, and, and try and um, gauge what it is that you require for uh, deconvolution in, in a PSF and you can even elongate it uh, you know depending on the shape of your stars. Um, motion blur would allow you to uh, adjust if you have elongated stars you could uh, tighten them up fix them a bit um, but we're using the external PSF and we're that's probably the best one that you're going to want to use uh, for the deconvolution it gives you the most uh, options um, to um, refine yourself uh, refine the uh, particulars that are going to give you the best results so what we want to do in the deconvolution menu is select our PSF image. So we do that as such. So now it shows that our view identifier is the PSF and we can see that image represented here. So now we have our PSF image selected and we're going to want to add the decon mask. So we're going to click and hold and drag it and drop onto our luminance image. We can close that decon mask now, minimize it, and we can see that the mask is present and it's functioning. The red is concealing, so the red is protecting the background, and the white reveals, showing us our stars so that we can actually tighten those up, sharpen things, and we still have, I'm not sure if it's easy for you to see, uh, in the video, but we still have some of the nebulosity showing um, It's not the mask isn't fully blocking it so we can affect some of those details as well when we do the deconvolution So let's just turn off the uh, mask preview because we don't need to see the mask and We want to go back to the deconvolution menu Richard regularized Richard Lucy Lucy um, is uh, my preferred choice some people use the regularized van sitter um, both work well uh, but I think a lot more people use the regularized Richard Lucy um, but it, it's your choice you can actually experiment with the two and see which one works better for you I'm just gonna leave it on the regularized uh, Richardson Lucy uh, iterations you want to use uh, between 50 and 80 um, iterations. Uh, the deconvolution uh, works in stage in steps, so each iteration it uh, improves on the last one. 
um, improving your star image and, and your resolution in your image. Uh, so you want to set that between 50 and 80. You don't want too few and you don't want uh, too many. Um, if you go too far, if you get, if you do too many, if you do more than 80, say, uh, so that often won't help you It actually start degrading the image. So we don't want to do that. So generally 50 to 80 is the accepted iteration count, uh, that you want to use. Um, I typically, I use 50, um, pretty much as a standard. You can leave the target at the, uh, luminance. You want to make sure that deringing is selected. The default for the global dark is going to be way too high, you'll find, and you're going to have to adjust that, and we'll look at adjusting that in a second. Um, global bright is always uh, set at zero. We want to add in our local deringing support image. And the local deringing support image um, is going to help protect some of these stars as well for us. In terms of uh, rigging around the stars, and um, we want to try and not have uh, dark ringing or bright ringing around the stars. So this mask, uh, we select it by uh, enabling local deringing, and we choose the LDSI, which is our local deringing support image. That's this one here that we had created using the star mask tool. And if we do a preview, you're going to want to work in previews because deconvolution, um, like other processes in PixInsight, is very CPU intensive. Um, it can take uh, a bit of time for it to actually uh, do its job. So if you uh, uh, test on some preview uh, previews first, that uh, will actually go a lot faster and allow you to see, see the results before you um, commit to applying them, applying the settings. So let's just have a look at uh, what the uh, the settings here. I'm going to knock this. I am for the purpose of testing. I'm going to knock it down to 10 iterations just to keep it a little faster. And um, I'm going to leave the global dark at a thousand just to show you what you initially get. And that's what you will end up with something like that, which um, isn't good. And you're going to go, what is that? So uh, we want to knock this uh, down and we're going to take it down to say 200 for the global dark. And you might find that your values, you have to play with this uh, for your particular image, uh, but you might find that 100 or 200 is pretty typical. Um, but you might find other values uh, are needed and work. So this is something you just have to play with. So we're just going to knock it down initially to 200. Um, And we'll see what that does, how that improves on things here. And we should notice a big difference. And yeah, we do. We see a huge difference. So now things look a lot more like they should. Um, and if I do a Control Shift Z, and I can do a before and after, you can actually see some of the improvement that has occurred. Let me just get... Uh, let me just get some stars here that we can actually see that on. Okay, so it looks like 200 is a good value. We don't need to apply any of the global bright because what what you'd see with um, what you'd see with the global bright is a bright ring around your stars, and that and and nudging that up will help correct that if that is the case. If you do encounter it. Um, in my case, I'm not encountering it here, so I don't need to use it. Uh, it is very sensitive, so start out with small numbers of 50 or 100 and see how that works uh, to remove any bright ringing that might occur around your stars. Um, the global dark that removes a dark ring around your stars, again, I'm not experiencing that at this setting, so we don't have to worry uh, about... Um, making any more adjustments. It looks like the, this value of 200 is, uh, is good and we're going to use that. So we're going to bump this back up to 50 iterations and we're going to give it a test on our preview just to see what things will look like. Okay and 
now we can actually uh, do a control shift Z and we can see that we've uh, gained some resolution um, on the stars and the in the image itself if we look at uh, uh, close up here we'll zoom in on some stars you can see that's before and that's after that's before and that's after we can we actually gained uh, uh, some resolution and you can actually see if you look at this star here it uh, goes from being fairly undefined to uh, being uh, defined so we've gained some resolution in the image and we've it's it's going to be harder for you to see uh, in the video I suspect but we've gained some uh, resolution back in the nebulosity as well uh, so that uh, we have a little more detail showing in there which is fantastic um, so that's the deconvolution process so what you want to do now is apply deconvolution to your entire image and with all of the support images in place the PSF is selected the local deringing support image is selected and we have our decon mask applied we're now going to click the blue triangle drag and drop and pix insight will do its thing running the uh, deconvolution process on our image so again this is fairly cpu intensive so it'll take a little while i'll just fast forward through this uh, uh, the uh, wonders of video and uh, we'll get to the end end result okay so there's the image with the deconvolution applied and we've regained some of the resolution that was lost due to uh, atmospheric distortion and optics and it looks really nice um, the deconvolution tool can be very very useful very handy um, it can do a lot to help restore your images and improve them it'll just take a little bit to master that's all it's uh it can it it it, it can be tricky and um, it is something that uh, that people grapple with but it is possible to to master it and you can see the improvements that you can get when we're looking at this uh, that's after and that's before it, you can actually see around the bright star here that it's noticeably uh, uh, blurred looking compared to after we've applied the 50 iterations of deconvolution to it which uh, it sharpens up but we should note that deconvolution is not sharpening it sharpening is something completely different and deconvolution is uh, is designed to regain to restore like I said that that resolution that was lost in your image and that's not uh, not to be confused with sharpening I hope that the information that I have provided here in the video uh, for you to visualize it to see how it's done uh, can be helpful in your workflow in applying deconvolution um, I know that it's uh, uh, as I said uh, a couple times already it's a uh, it's an evil word uh, sometimes and it's it's a difficult thing to grasp um, to to uh, to grab by the horns and wrestle and and actually get to work properly for you but um, practice makes perfect and uh, you want to just keep doing it um, this video will uh, give you some of that information that you need to know the steps involved and you can take this and and rewatch it and follow those steps and create your um, your support images and apply your deconvolution to your image and uh, hopefully you'll get better and better at it and you'll find that it works uh, really well and the results are satisfying for you so thanks very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and like. Uh, I do appreciate that. And welcome to the new subscribers. And I wish you clear skies. And we'll see you in the next video.